Holy cow. Chronic made partner. Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. We are working class nerds. Cue the intro. That's right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, May 13th, 2021, and you can find this 106 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find this podcast in the entire galaxy. Yep, the entire one, even Camino. You can also watch me play video games at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. And you can watch Nick play video games at twitch.tv slash NickBird51. And you can find the both of us on Twitter. I am at MarcusB814. And I'm at Nick Vern. That's N-I-C-K-V-E-R. And in this week's episode, our guest is pretty epic. She is both an actor and a streamer on Twitch and also a very, very powerful Sith Lord. And her name is Arminestra. So welcome to the show, Arminestra. And what have you been up to? Honestly, that was, first of all, one of the best introductions. The fact you included the Sith Lord, A++. <laughs> we're very uh, thorough here on Working Class Nerds, as you can tell. You are, honestly. We're, this is the best start. Oh, man. I mean, look, recently it's been a lot of lockdown stuff because we're in full stay-at-home order right now. So what can I say? Watching Buffy for the very first time is life-changing. Ooh. Life-changing. How that? How many seasons of Buffy are there? I can tell you there are seven because I've plowed through it in uh, no time at all. And I am currently on the last season. Wow. And it's, yeah, it's as good as everybody says. What what can I say? It's, it's amazing. But I I've balance never, that. I've never, I've never watched Buffy. Never, not even one episode? Nope. <gasps> on like ABC or whatever? No, I don't even, like it's a vampire show, right? That's oh. like saying a Star Wars, Star Wars is like a, an astronaut show. <laughs> okay yeah I, i've never watched buffy the vampire slayer so it's like a drama it is yes. like a drama <laughs> it's yes it's like there's lots of layers and complicated characters and things so, from what i understand th- if i watch a show i don't that's not my type of show i like obviously i like the star wars shows um there were some shows on usa back in the day like burn notice like those are the shows i like mm. um the show that Armanestra was on, I really liked. Suits? But I didn't, yeah. I did Suits. not know that, yeah. I did not know you were no, on that until like 20 like, minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, the old IMDb. Yes. Yeah, so yes. We're like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute here. <laughs> um, but those are like my type of shows where they're like hmm. <clears throat> continuations and like the story builds. That's the type of show that I personally like. Yeah. But like the, ep- like the, the Buffies, I don't think that's me. Not for you. Hey, look. Not for everybody, maybe. Actually, so you guys are you guys are in full lockdown. We are, yeah, and it just actually today got extended another two weeks. So oh, that is rude. It is honestly without without my Buffy and my new Audible subscription, I don't know where I would be. <laughs> Whoa! All right, what book are you currently listening to <laughs> on Audible? Okay, so big flex here. I just started Atomic Habits, and I feel like like a complete person now because uh-huh. it's it's i i feel like i've read three chapters i've listened to three chapters already am i allowed to say read if it's an audiobook like yeah, we, do, ask, we do it all the can. time okay good. we do it all the time you're, yeah you're good okay good because you know I, i'd rather tell people i read than i listen um so it's like three chapters and i feel like i'm already you know narrowing in on my good and bad habits so for those of you who also didn't know what, uh, not familiar with Atomic Habits, it, the, the full title reads, Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. That sounds very, very productive. It is. It's the only thing that will combat my hours of watching Buffy, honestly. That's a good point. I, I feel like I would read it and go, I'm going to be a better person. <laughs> yeah. And then as soon as I close, it's like, okay. You close the audible, gonna, audible and then you go right back to what you're exactly, doing. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm going to I'm gonna wake up in the morning and I'm going to ride my Peloton. I'm going to drink a gallon <laughs> of water. I'm going to eat four salads today and a Nutri-Grain bar. 
and then as soon as I as soon as I'm done, uh, you know, with the Audible, yeah, book. yeah, uh, Audible book. Where are the cookies? <laughs> yeah, or like, yeah. ooh, Burger King. You just yeah. fall right in. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I must say, you know, I've read a bunch of books like this. You know, always trying to improve, always trying to be my very best self, you know. Anyway, so – but this Absolutely. one is very much like – It's like sticking with you? It, it It's not even so much that. It's like, so I understand this is going to be hard for you. Here's how to do it knowing that this is going to be impossible. Here's how to make okay. it not impossible. So that well, kind of cool. sticks with me a little bit. Yeah, I can imagine that. Would you say you're a confident person or – are you the type of person that needs that little nudge, nudge to take the next step? Ooh, man, I, I think it totally depends, you know, what boat we're sailing on. Sure, um, that's a great point. Like, I, I would definitely say that my shame meter is very low. So I'm, I, <laughs> there's pretty much nothing I won't say and do. That's, um, Marcus is like that as well. <laughs> honestly, I feel like I knew that when Marcus flew into my chat for the first time, I was like, this guy, this Who guy is, this guy? is gonna be <laughs> like. I hope he's as good as I think he's gonna be. And then I went onto his stream, and I was like, "This guy is everything I dreamed of more." The energy. <laughs> I was like, "Buddies, immediately, no choice in the matter." Yes, well, that, thanks. This is Marcus dives face first into everything yeah. that he uh, puts his mind to. It's kind of a it's kind of a curse though, too. Yeah, I mean, your nose is big enough to handle it, though. That's right. I'm Greek. <laughs> what can I say? Um. So back to atomic habits. Mm. Is it chapter is it chapter based by like just bettering yourself or is each chapter individualized to like oh, try to break yeah something. like a topic? Uh yeah, so so I think it's kind of the latter so far. Basically, he started off the book by outlining this terrible accident that happened to him. He was going to be like this baseball player he had his heart set on it and then he got whacked in the face with a bat and like Oof. pretty much had to learn how to do everything all over again they were like you're never going to play baseball you're never going to do, do this or that anyway with little habits by changing one percent you know he he draws a comparison to the british biking team but it's like uh, you know tiny little micro adjustments over a period of time creates you know, a different person. It's mm. about like becoming the person you want to be, not doing the things you want to do. So it's not about losing weight. It's about becoming a person who is, um, you know, who exercises like an, an right. athlete. It's interesting. But that's a cool way to look at it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like um, that sort of happens to people naturally, right? Like you make little incremental changes or you change as you're going through life and you don't sort of realize those changes. But if you're conscious about it, you can steer that ship, proverbial ship, if you will, into mm. the direction that you want to like reach whatever goals you're trying to reach. Totally. That's, that's a cool way to look at it. Yeah. So I, Oh, go ahead. I, I don't like, I, I don't, I guess I don't, that doesn't really ferment with me mm -hmm. because yeah. I'm like, okay, I see the object at the end. I'm just going, don't, try, don't try to stop me. You know what I mean? Kind of a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to start this business and I'm going to make it fucking awesome. Go. Yeah. <laughs> no turning back. Like don't, don't deviate from the plan. Just go. That you know is, I mean? yeah, but that's your personality. And, no, I know that. And you are that's unlike great. most people. Yeah. That's incredible that you have that. You know what I mean? Like that's just your nature is honestly probably why you have, you know, your own successful business. You, you know, your successful Twitch channel. It's yeah. It seems to be your nature. I'm super blessed. Um, now, I guess if you could say, if you could tell the world, if you have one bad habit, what would it be other than watching Buffy Oof. all day? <laughs> Damn. You, you took it Damn, from me. Buffy twice already. <laughs> you yeah. took it from me. <laughs> um, I don't drink enough water. All right. I don't drink enough. Uh, and by, you know, you're like, oh, is that a bad habit? But I actually don't. Sometimes, because I have a, a hydrate redeem on my stream, which they love to spam, which brings me joy. But sometimes before the stream, I haven't had any water at all. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, I'm saying I don't drink any water. Very bad. Anyway, so uh, I made this challenge. I made, I've made, like, these challenges in my community these last couple months. So a month ago, it was um, 10 push-ups every morning. So this month, 
<laughs> is this courtesy of Atomic Habits? Anyway, this month, <laughs> it's one liter of water every morning. Wow. Yeah. That's up. epic. Yeah. So, you know, so far, so tough. I'll be totally honest. Um, tell us a little bit more about your stream. What games are you playing? Um, I play World of Warcraft and I play Star Wars. Um, MMOs. That's how I found your channel. Yeah. Yeah. It's been MMOs right now. I actually came to Star Wars in the, in recent months. One of my, um, one of the buddies I made on, in my chat, um, told me he was playing it and I was like, I downloaded that game. Like, Seven years ago, I never played. I should give it a go. Fell in love. Fell in love. Obviously, we're big fans here. Yeah, I mean, Just look. Just a little bit. <laughs> I, it's like one of the many reasons I was excited to hop in here. I love just talking about it and nerding out about it it's it's my first character. I'm not done the plot yet, but I'm hooked on the decision making. I love what, it. Uh, sorry, I mean to cut you off. What type yeah. of character did you pick? I picked a Sith Inquisitor. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Full on Sith Lord Lightning and all. Yeah. I mean, like, with a lot of help from chat, I do commit uh, mostly to the evil decision making. <laughs> Does it hurt <laughs> to make that choice? You know, I don't know whether or not I should be ashamed to say this or not, but it's become easier. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> now See, I'm just my- casually beheading people. It's bad. I, I like all, making all the dark side choices. You guys are awful people. No you way. Stay. You guys are awful Star people. Star Wars made me do it. <laughs> Star Wars <laughs> made me do it. <laughs> no, it's, I, it's great. I think if I was a Sith pers- uh, in real life, I would be a dark side user for sure. Mm. Or I, see, I should say, if I was force sensitive in real life. I think it's the most practical. But we'll we'll chat about that later. Um, Absolutely not. Yeah. But anyway, um, do you play any other games? Yeah, I mean... I, I've been gaming since I was, I think since I could hold a controller, since I was, you know, watching my dad play Super Nintendo. Um, I've been like mainly a console player. I switched to PC for World of Warcraft. Um, and then as streaming um, sort of um, began to be my big love right now, I just switched to PC games so that I can just play with all my friends. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I love a good plot. Um, the Mass Effect games, some of my favorite games ever. They're doing the Legendary Edition. It comes out tomorrow. I'm excited. Oh, yes. Um, well, I was going to be productive tomorrow. Not anymore. No, it's over. It's over for both of us. Um, the Mass Effect games, Fable I loved, Uncharted, the puzzles in that. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Fallen- Ocarina of Time is good. Um, have That's you great. played Fallen Order? So actually, I'm about uh, a third of the way through right now. It's so good. It's excellent. Hey, I have a soft spot for gingers. So the fact that it's a ginger lead, oh. I'm tickled. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I uh, What was I going to say? I loved Fallen Order. Um, the ending is particularly satisfying. I like mm. just being immersed in that whole, it, like a relatively unexplored chunk of of Star Wars timeline, you mm-hmm. know? Right after, like, the end of episode three, but but way before episode um, four. It's mm. interesting. But, Marcus, uh, how are you doing? And what have you been up to? I'm fantastic, Nick. Fantastic. Wow. That's a lot of positivity. <laughs> um, well, it, it's, it's just been crazy. So, as you know, ne- on Monday, I leave. I'm going to Batu. Yep. And I'm going to... Disney make- World in Florida. Yep. I'm going to Disney World, and I'm going to build a lightsaber. I am going to drink blue milk. I am going to work really hard to get a selfie with a First Order trooper. But I've been told that if you, like, try to take a selfie, they try to, like, shoot you and arrest you. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that goes. you got to be, like, quick draw McGraw. Just be like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I will. But I think I'm going to go live. I forget what night, what day I'm going to be there. And when I'm in Batu, I am totally going to probably go live for like 20 minutes or a half an hour. And hopefully I can like, hopefully the signal is good enough there to where I can stream a little bit from my phone and like show everybody like the trading post, the like blue that. milk, and just hang out with the chat for, you know, 20 minutes, half hour. Yeah. That sounds fun. It's going to be awesome. Um, You know, as customary, I just have to say thank you to everybody in the t- my twitch community you guys are awesome i can't thank you enough um this saturday which this is going to go live on friday so if you hear it Tomorrow. and you're in our discord i am doing um uh, my first ever q 
community night with my community. And we're going to be doing some story mode operations in SWOTOR. Everybody is welcome. If we have more than 16 people, then we can always, we'll do one and then grab some other people and like kind of switch some people out so everybody can get a chance to play. I'm super looking forward to this because you guys all come to watch me play all the time. It's my turn to like give back to you and like take you into the content that I love in the game. So I'm super excited for that. Now, a little bit of downer. So I don't know if I, I mentioned it last week, how I left my nightmare team. Yes. It's been really bothering me, Nick, right? Yeah. Like this fucking guy, he was such a douche and passive aggressive. And like, he just brought my energy down. Yeah. And like, I don't like that shit. I, I, I work really hard to be positive and like, no matter how bad something is, yeah. you shouldn't make somebody feel like shit because you know, things aren't going perfect. When you're doing hard, the hardest content in any game, it takes time to learn that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we had the best night ever on the boss. And then this dude like figured he would call me, well, message me the next day and tell me how shitty I am. And that he sent my VOD from Twitch to another player just oh. so they could tell me how shitty I was. And like, I wasn't going to really call that person out here, but it's been bothering me. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to do it on my stream because like, I don't want to do that there. Cause I feel like that breeds negativity. Yeah. But like, bro, fuck off. Yeah. Okay? That's, that's not cool. You don't need right. that negative. But on the positive side now I'm creating a new fucking team. And when I left that team, five of the people from that team quit instantly. They were like, fuck you. Wow. We're out. And those uh, five people are all coming with me. So I don't know what that says, but that says we're going to have a new team and it starts when I come back from Florida. Woo -woo. Boomba, positivity. So <laughs> on my Saturday night story nights, I am also doing the Sith Inquisitor story for the first time. Do you feel like we've just gotten closer? <laughs> if it's even possible, I feel like we've just gotten closer. <laughs> I'm ho I'm holding my two hands together, making a heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, unlike psychopaths, Armanestra and Nick, Oof. I don't like making dark side choices at all. But here's the catch. Okay, I turned off the alignment. So I can't, when you scroll over the wheel to see what choice it is, it does not show you if it's a light side or a dark side choice. Whoa. So whatever choice you make, you're owning it. So I will say that some of the choices that I make are dark side and some of them don't make, ooh, excuse me. Some of them don't make sense because the way they read. Yeah. It doesn't seem like mean. Yes, exactly. I'm like, well, that's not really mean. Like the guy's an asshole and I want him to be an asshole. But where I will agree with both of you, yeah. Sometimes when one of the like NPCs talk back to me, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "Who do you think you are talking to me like that?" <laughs> I am Darth Marcus, yeah. Darth <laughs> Lord Marcus. of the Sith. <laughs> you it's know what very I mean? Satisfying. Yes, yes, it is. And then, like, but I have not. I have yet to shoot lightning at anybody. Like to like, like scold them. I'm like, eh, I'm not your dad. That's not, that's not my style. You <laughs> know what I mean? Job. Yeah. I get yeah. That. yeah. I get that. Um, so anyway, I've been having a ton of fun with that. And, you know, so with my impending trip to Florida, I purchased a new game for <gasps> my switch and my switch is back. So I got immortals Phoenix rising. Oh yeah. So that's the open world one. That's like, yes. It's, it's like a Greek mythology, right? Yeah, it's set in uh, Greece, ancient Greece, and it's based, like, the mechanics are, it's basically a clone of... Um, Breath of the Wild? Yes. Yeah. So I am super excited. I am not bringing my laptop on vacation. Wow. I am not playing SWOTOR for a week. I'm not playing wow. any other game unless I have it on my Switch, which I'm kind of excited to play Mario Kart, because, yeah. like, I think I'm, like, halfway through the campaign of, like, beating everything with first place victories. Yeah. So... It gets hard, man. Well, did you ever do like the 200 cc's where yeah, you have so to you, like jump and drift? Yeah, you have or, to drift, otherwise you're just like crashing on every turn. Yes. Yeah. It's that shit is tough. It's intense. Yes. And you can screw up the drift too. And then when you're winning, 
the whole match and then all of a sudden the blue shell comes and you get second place it's <sighs> oh my god that it's almost blue shell is... it's almost better off to like be in second place towards the end and yeah. then just wait for the blue shell to take out the first person yeah but i feel like i if you're not first you're last yeah i i agree i learned that from ricky bubby <laughs> We're two for two on the uh, Will Ferrell movies. Although I think the um, Anchorman reference was uh, pre pre recording, but sadly, yes, everyone loves yes. an Anchorman reference. Yes, um, you know, yesterday I made a uh, Deuce Bigelow male gigolo reference. And Whoa, was throwback! Yeah, I was yeah. about to say you're taking it yes. way back, way back. Anyways, um, again, I mentioned it at the beginning of the show. Uh, good friend of the show will be on the show in June. Um, actually, a month from today. Uh, Director Chronic, uh, part of the Guardians of the Order, he made Twitch partner today. That's so cool. Whoa. Or yesterday, yeah. And that is a big deal to make partner. <sighs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's so epic. he had his celebration stream today, and how awesome is that? Like. What a milestone it must be. Yeah. Like, oh, I can't yeah. even imagine what that would be like. Like, I don't expect myself to ever make it to that point. But, yeah. like, can you imagine that? I heard, I think I heard that something like um, 0.66% of streamers are partner. It's it's and like that, nobody. Nobody. That sounds about right. Yeah. But yeah, I think, and it's like only the top 20% of streamers have more than 15 people watching their stream. Wow. Yeah, you know, I uh, I was looking at Final Fantasy XIV's like catalog, and I was like, "Oh, let's see you at the bottom." There was hundreds of people that didn't ha like had one viewer. Wow! And I was just like, "Man, I appreciate everybody so much." That's it's hard to do, you know. Yeah, to keep it going. Well, it's just you know that's why I tell everybody, I I appreciate your just being here. Like you choose me over every other better streamer in the world. To watch me versus somebody else. Right. And that is, it's an unbelievable feeling when you think about it like that. And then um, my last big thing. Oh, wait. So congratulations, Chronic. You deserve it. And we're looking forward to hearing your story on the show soon. Last thing is, Nick. Yep. What have you been up to? <laughs> so first and foremost, I got to talk about uh, Liverpool pulling out the victory over Man United oh, today. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> uh, got some soccer fans in the chat <laughs> yes yes we do so i'm a big liverpool fan i'm actually wearing a liverpool hat right now it's disgusting marcus <laughs> is an arsenal fan which i don't know how he uh he ran into that but i, I saw an arsenal sometimes. game back in the day it was beautiful whoa yeah now i'm jealous i peaked um, yeah that was my peak <laughs> So, anywho, I just want to rub that in Marx's face. We won a game. Uh, we're doing moving up in the table as the season closes. Anyways, back at the ranch. Um, I streamed another time. Oh, my God. Kitty yeah. has recorded the sound of him saying, meanwhile, back at the ranch. And he's <laughs> going to give it to us because he's... We say that all the time. Yeah. He listens to it while he's chopping food at his job in the morning. And yeah. he said that he laughs every time that you say that. <laughs> moving on. Sorry. So, this one's for you, Kitty. Back at the ranch, uh, I streamed another time woo -woo. this week. Just a test stream. I'm not fully like in, hey, I'm going to stream mode yet. I'm just trying things out, seeing what works. Evidently, my Yeti mic setup does not. I got to figure that out. Um, so I just use my headset mic. But it was pretty cool. I played just some Cold War, just multiplayer. I just wanted to play something simple that I could be do by myself. And shout out to two of my paintball teammates, uh, Jacob and Zen. Uh, both of them popped in and Zen got a bunch. Now what I realize is a bunch of his friends from high school to hop on and follow me as well with all kinds of crazy names. That was a funny, it was hilarious to read off. Uh, like some of my usernames, Nick Vern 51, as you know, I think there was a Nick Vern 52 and Nick Vern 53. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then some, some names along the lines of like Hugh Janus and, and, uh, classic you know such a bart so, simpson joke so, yes lots of bart simpson joke yeah. names so and of course every time the follower pops up i'm like reading it and just laughing but so that was fun i think i got like 10 followers now i, I think i got five or so more from that evening which is fun um i also played some sea of thieves with joey feta i actually watched some of that um that was sweet uh we conquered a f our vault a full vault which is cool so, quick rundown of Sea of Thieves if you've never played it. Um, it's like an open you can an open world game where you just get to go be a pirate and you can do missions for different factions. 
Um, and each faction has different types of missions. So there's one faction called the Gold Hoarders, where you literally go look for buried treasure. Um, in this one, it's a series of buried treasures where you find like a piece of a map, and then another piece, and then you find the key to the vault, and then you go open the vault and try to get all the treasure. But the twist is you have sea monsters in the ocean going after you and other players who um, are sailing for another faction. Another faction, uh, the Reapers, are specifically tasked to go hunt down the people who are getting the gold, which is interesting. So you have to kind of like be a real pirate while you're going for treasure and stuff. And of course, there's other factions that do other things. But we successfully did a whole gold hoarders mission, which is fun. Um, got lots of loot and got to open the secret vault and like solve a couple puzzles and things. So that was sweet. Um, I don't know. You know, I watch you play. I know some other people that are playing it. And for me, I feel like just being a pirate isn't enough to keep me intrigued in the game. Yeah. Like I wish there was some progression because like if I could do that and be like an, uh, like a level one pirate, but like once you get to level 50 pirate, you get the real R. You yeah. know what I mean? Or something. Yeah. Also, like, that's one gripe for Sea of Thieves for me. Like, you can... The progression is in what you get from the missions. So I'll give you an example. For the gold hoarders missions that I was doing, you just find, like, entry-level treasure. And then, like, the entry-level treasure missions unlock, like, medium treasure missions. You just get more treasure, but you don't really do a lot with it. Treasure. So, like... Y- any of the upgrades that you end up getting are just cosmetics. It's like, oh, I got a gold cannon, but your gold cannon doesn't do more damage. It's just gold. What? You know? So it's like, it's not like you're killing enemy players faster or anything like that. Like, there's no gear tiering or anything. So everyone's cannons shoot the same. Like, it's just based on, like, your skill of, like, can you shoot better? Can you, like, reload faster? Like, literally clicking the buttons and going through the menus and stuff. But hmm. so that I don't love. That It's, like, definitely crushing some of the replayability. But it is fun to go around and be pi- like a pirate with your friends for a little bit. So I don't see myself playing a whole lot of Sea of Thieves, but I I appreciate like the sort of short lived fun that it brings. If that sure. makes sense, mm-hmm. yeah. But um, in real life stuff, I went to the apartment and played Carpenter this week a couple times. I hung up, <laughs> hung up a, a curtain rod over my bedroom window. Well, you should know how to do that shit. Yeah, I know. I only worked with you for three years. Or four years, or seventeen years, or however long you still work for me. You know, I'm still I've never, on your W two. <laughs> no, no, you're still on the payroll. I will. I refuse to take it off because I'm like he's gonna come back one day. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to work for Marcus uh, back in the Diz A, like part time uh, during college and things, and high school some I think. But um, so I did some of that. I hung up a a rod in my closet also to hang stuff on. Things like just you know adulting. That's hot. <laughs> mm, I call that stuff life admin. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like working on packing up boxes. I'm I'm moving into an apartment, obviously. If you couldn't get from the uh, the context clues, and I and I completely somehow some way I can't believe this. Yeah, I Marcus got of- owes me like four fucking moves. Like I've helped him move four times, uh, maybe three, but a bunch. Right? But for the record, you're moving a week early. Yeah, I am. So I my lease. Well, I don't even have a, a real lease. That's part of the beauty of this, but. Um, I was supposed to move in June 1st, but I'm able to move in a, like the weekend before. And that's when Marcus is going to be in Florida. So, yeah, we were supposed to do it the 29th and the 30th. I had it all blocked off. And now Nick and well, Nick still does need moving. I'm just going to go there and help him drink beer. Yeah, it's perfect. Another important <laughs> job. Yeah. Someone's yeah, got to do it. Yeah. Yep. It can't stay in the fridge. This is not allowed. <laughs> yeah. We need the room. Please help us make room for the uh, next case. Yes, exactly. Um, so I, I found, I, I want to say I found, but like people know it exists, but I found some cool Star Wars content that I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on. So if you go in the way back machine to the early two thousands, uh, like right, I think it's before episode three comes out, came out cartoon network was airing these little five minute clips yeah. of 2d animated clone wars episodes. Mm-hmm. It was like a, in between commercial breaks and things. And Disney Plus now has... A, they're in two seasons. Um, Disney Plus has the two seasons of them uploaded into, like, what's essentially two-hour-ish movies. Yeah. And they're great. They yeah. fell, they fell in some awesome details in between episodes two and three. Like, you see Anakin transition from a Padawan to a Jedi Knight. You see, like, General Grievous develop as a whole character. Yeah, dude. You see, like... I just watched it for the first... I, okay, so I had 
watched some of it before, but then I went back and actually watched it yeah. this week. So good. Um, you see how Grievous gets a cough, like why he's coughing. Why does he cough? He... Spoilers. Well, you know, you got to watch it. I'm not telling you. <sighs> Spoilers. It's only you watched all of Buffy. Uh, you can handle Buffy, two hours. If it's not Buffy, how will my eyes know what they're seeing? <laughs> <laughs> so fair enough i will say though speaking of visuals it's like drawn kind of like samurai jack was. yes it's epic it's like, so good and dude. all the sound is like 100 percent like um thx quality like yes exactly like yes. the main movies mm -hmm. a lot of the voice actors if they are not the actual actors they sound very I'm very very so similar disappointed in you right now that i hadn't discovered yes. that i think I'm it's so from 2003 but Anywho. Oh, that was a tough year, 2003. Yeah. That's when the Red Sox were this close to going to the World Series. I know. Thankfully, they did the next year, though. Fuck yeah, they did. Uh, but anyways, that's 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 all for me. What do we got in SOTOR news, Marcus? Well, in SOTOR news, um, we got game update 6.3.a. Yep. I just wanted to talk about my little review on the content for 6.3 so after weeks of this update being out i want to say that they did a great job on the flashpoint secrets of the enclave mm -hmm. it's fun to run i don't feel as if it's too difficult to do it as if you're a newer player uh -huh. and you get to that level of content it's um it's not super long so you can do it and not feel like Ugh, this is taking forever. I haven't found any bugs in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's been really fun. Second thing is, is the whole Galactic Seasons update. I feel like they've knocked it out of the park with the Battle Pass. I know we've talked about it m many times, Nick. Yeah. But like uh, people are playing the game more than ever right now. People are doing things that they don't normally do in game. Yep. Whether they like it or they don't. They are playing the game and enjoying it. Yeah. So for me, the battle pass is working. Now, if you don't want to do the grind and you want to just pay your way to the end and win, you do that. Yeah. I personally did that because I don't, I'm not grinding and playing for the two hours a night or three hours a night that I have to play a game. I'm not going to waste my time on doing shit that I don't want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. But going with that, People are enjoying it. People are grouping up together. People are doing the things that they want to do to um, enjoy the enjoy all the content of the game. Now, Armanestra, when you play Swotor, you know, have you done any of the flashpoints or anything like that? Or are you just playing the story? So funny you should ask i've done one flashpoint otherwise story but this saturday um i'm doing you know my chat's been talking about this revan flashpoint and Ooh, the foundry yeah so we're doing it on saturday yes the it's so good the foundry's very cool is it okay i'm excited to see what the hype's all about because yeah people are really really excited yeah you um you're gonna love it because did you play Knights of the Old Republic? Oh, yeah. Oh, so you're going to... This is just going to be lots of flashbacks and like, things. Uh, or like, yeah. not flashbacks. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Nostalgia. Yeah, it's like going home. I get you. Yes. No, when I first did it, like, I'm not even going to talk about it. The whole thing, you're just like, wow. And make sure whoever you're doing it with... Mm -hmm. um does the whole thing tell them that you want to kill the trash you don't want to do any shortcuts you're going to watch all the cutscenes. <laughs> yes like enjoy the whole flashpoint wow. because it's that good because i found out so i did it uh yesterday on stream in master mode with my Oof. friends because i never did it in master mode and like they were cutting all the corners and like i like killing everything yeah like i like doing all the bonus stuff i like doing it all and they were like cutting these corners oh don't go there skip this trash skip that i'm like why don't we just run down the middle of the hallway and kill everything in our way they're like but you don't have to but i want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah you want the full experience yes and unlimited it, and power yeah i can't after okay after you finish that flashpoint mm. like if it's not too late and you want to shoot me a message on uh discord, discord yeah. just tell me how Freaking awesome that flashpoint is. I 
Absolutely will. Because and I, I if, feel like I'll be thinking about it for a long time. Everybody's, yeah. So what were you going to say? I was going to say that, and if you ever want to do a Flashpoint, just let me know. Oh, um, yeah. I would I'll love totally, to. Uh, yeah, anytime. We yeah. can get, I can get a group of four together. No, well, three. No problem. Yeah, I uh, I would actually really love to. I understand there's, yeah, I am. I, I'm really a bit of a plot hound. Um but I do understand there's some good plot points in these flashpoints, and I'm all about those cutscenes. Bring them on, yum yum yum. Do you know um, who Darth Malgus is? Uh, I do. Like I'm familiar. I'm familiar, but I don't know deep lore. I don't know. You know. Okay. Yeah. So the um, that all the flashpoints, mm -hmm. he's like the general that instructs you to do them. So you really get an idea on who he is right. by doing flashpoints. And you can do them in like story mode where they're really easy and you'll get the cutscenes. They're probably about 40 minutes, 45 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Some of them your first time through. It's really good content for your stream too, because you're going to get to make some choices that influence the actual flashpoint. What? Yeah. Like as I'm not going to tell you which one, but like, you got to like decide, are you going to let these, are you going to let people die or are you going to put them out or put these other people out the airlock? What? Oh my. Okay, well both of those sound like dark side options to me. Well, you're going to have to find out. Okay. And uh you know, so it's it's good. Now, have you been like do you know what Galactic Seasons is? I know nothing about Galactic Seasons at all. So does it pop up on your screen? It it does. I've flipped through them super super briefly, but I haven't done anything uh, I haven't played with them at all. Like I haven't tried to do anything okay. for the season. Yeah. Well, if you've hit level one on uh, your galactic seasons thing, you've unlocked a new companion <gasps> and have you, star Wars episode four, well, a new hope, you know what I'm talking about? Of course. Okay. So when you remember how in um, Obi-Wan and Luke and the droids are all going to the, uh, the bay where the millennium Falcon is. Uh -huh. And there's that, like the guy that has the long nose and it's like, beep, 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 yes, beep, of beep. course. That's the type of companion you get. Get out of here. And it's completely free as long as you hit level, level one. Yeah. Uh, okay. And That's the fire that I shit. needed. I got to yes. claim that shit. Yep. And um, do you sub to the game or are you free to play? I do. Yeah. No, I'm a sub. Okay, great. So, yeah. So, you're going to get free cartel coins for doing it. So, you should, next time you log in, click on your Galactic Seasons thing that pops up in the top left when you log in. Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you have some rewards there. What? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, I must say I collect my daily login rewards and I, yep, I get slicing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, make sure you do. And um, I will. Thank you. That's yeah. great. Great tip. Pro tip. Pro. In AIE News, Tuesdays are a mandatory fun night where the fun is mandatory, but attendance is not. Those are 9 to 11 p.m., and we switch between the much better Imperial side and the Sunshine and Rainbows uh, Republic, side. Side. Republic side. And that is Eastern time, of course, because that is the real time zone. Yes. The only time zone. Yep. The so, time zone to rule them all. Ah, so um, Fridays are the place to be in AIE. So the first Friday of every month, we do Master Mode Flashpoints, which are the hardest version of the Flashpoints, obviously, much like the one we were just chatting about. Uh, the second Friday of every month is Hard Mode Training for different operations and various Hard Mode content. And tomorrow, we're going to be doing a Hard Mode Explosive Conflict, which will be really fun. It's not only a regular conflict, it's particularly <laughs> explosive. <laughs> So the third Fridays of every month in AIE are achievement hunting. So all the datacrons and, and various uh, tricky to kill world bosses and crazy achievements. Nerf herder. The nerf herder achievement. You got to collect the nerf calves. Yes. All of the things. And one of them like spawns like once every three hours. Oh, that's that's tough. Yeah. Wow, that's a long day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so that's the third Friday of every month. And the fourth Friday of every month. The fourth? The fourth Friday. It's There's four Fridays. That's all right. There's four Fridays, sometimes five Fridays in the month. But this one is always on the fourth. Right. So what I'm saying is it's Friday, 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 Friday. And it's Mega, the monthly epic guild activity. We'll sell you the whole C, but you'll only need the edge. <laughs> 
this album. Mega <laughs> is shit does not get old. <laughs> Uh, Mega is obviously Marcus's uh, brainchild. It's the monthly Epic Guild activity that always rotates. Um, Marcus, when can we play Where in the World is Seba San Diego? So uh, this coming Megas, which is in a couple week, uh, weeks, we are uh, heading to a very icy planet. And we're going to be hiding Seema on the planet. And you're going to have to do the trivia and find all the things that we tell you to to be able to find Seema, and you will have to die in order to find her. So you guys better get ready, because it's... Where in the world is Seema San Diego? <laughs> and it's Mega! <laughs> Anywho. This shit does not get old. This, obviously, I do this every episode. Also, if all this sounds fun to you, go to aie-guild.org. Jump in the Discord with the link for which you can find in the top right-hand portion of the web website uh, and ask for a guild invite whether or not you play Star Wars Guild Republic or any of the other games we play. And we do mean any of the other games. Uh, we would love to have you. Nick, I know you need to use the bathroom. I sure do. So we'll be right back. Jeez, Nick, hurry up. We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So today we're discussing what it's like to be both a Twitch streamer and an actor. And an awesome Sith Lord. And just an awesome person. And all the above. So D, all of the above. So first <laughs> first and foremost, Armin Estra, Um So who or whom? Wait, is, you got to lead with it. Tell I, her what we do this for every episode. Yes, we do. So we do this. So we ask the same surprise question every episode to every guest. And we'll go through our answers after also. But. Uh, who or whom is your favorite character in all of Star Wars? Oh. You can have some honorable mentions, too. You don't have to pick just one. Okay. Well, obviously, I thought of Chewie right away. That's a great answer. Because, look. Kymeri is so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> look. Man of few words. Gets right to the point. You know what I mean? Doesn't take a lot of bullshit. And yet, probably wonderful to hug. Agreed. It's a great choice. There you go. Wow. Chewy. <laughs> Allowed to have wow. honorable mentions. I love that. I love that. Yeah, because sometimes Palpatine oh, for sure then is my honorable oh, mention. There we go. Because he's so funny. <laughs> Just with his face, <laughs> his face. He clearly has never been outside in his life. It's the hood. It's like it covers too much. And you just know that some, I just, you know, he's always scheming. He's very funny. <laughs> have, have, have you, um, so I know you like, are a fan of, um, listening to books. Have you listened to the Darth Pelagius Plagueis book? Do you know, um, so no is my short answer, but, okay. but my, um, some of my friends on my stream are telling me to read the Darth Bane series. Yes, that is so. My favorite yes. character that I was going to say is Darth Bane. Okay. Audible, Audible. your next credit. My next yep. credit. No doubt my next credit. It's yeah. one of the best Star Wars trilogies in book form. I think that's my, I think, well, selfishly speaking, that's my favorite character, but Darth Bane is my, f I think that book series is my favorite. That and the Plagueis book is great, man. I like me some Sith Lords, obviously. Hmm. But I, yeah, I would go through the Bane series and then listen to the Darth Plagueis book because obviously, well, if you don't already know, this is not a big spoiler. Um, Darth Plagueis is Palpatine's master. No, I did not know that. I did yes, not. So, so he is a main character in that book. Wow. wow. It's very good. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. just gonna. I'm just it's, writing that down. Sorry. It's that. It's that. Take your time. It is the whole dynamic. Go over, the Darth Plagueis book goes over the whole um, dynamic between the two of them. Oh. Which is very very cool, and obviously ties directly into the prequels and the the rest of the Skywalker saga. Of course, so it's like a prequel to the prequels, but it's epic. Uh, Marcus, you want to run run through your favorite character real quick? My favorite characters are two D two. Ah, he's always there for you. He always is there to help. Always willing to help, and that's that's his sole purpose. Wow, Nick. Um, so. I'll I'll try to. Are you gonna switch it up? No, like, I, I feel I, like yours are gonna always like you're like the wild card. Like, how are you feeling today? <laughs> it's this one. Well, you know what? I think who was it? Serp or Chimeri that said um, Obi Wan Kenobi? 
I think it was Serp. I don't, I don't remember. remember. But anywho, I, so I was watching the Clone Wars uh, 2D, obviously. So, okay. So my normal answer is I think Dark Side people don't get enough credit because I think in, if, if I were a Force user in real life, I would be like a Mace Windu type character who kind of uses both sides of the Force because the Dark Side can be very pragmatic. You can bring people back from the dead. You can heal much better. Um, there's you don't you can be emotional and still be productive. Uh, I think the dark side is not doesn't have to be super super evil. Granted, you can be evil if you want it to be, and sometimes you got to be evil. <laughs> that can be productive, you know. But anywho, um, so in the past I've said it, Mace Windu is a really cool character. I really think Darth Bane is an epic character that I like a lot because of. I don't want to spoil anything. I'll just let you read the books um, because of the things that he established. And but also Obi Wan Kenobi is pretty cool too. On the light flip side of things, he's I think he's a cool character. He's always funny and he's like the epitome of like a knight, basically a literal Jedi knight, but also just like a badass warrior guy that's like always trying to do the right thing. Um. So anywho, that's my answer. I love that, and and I I really love what you just said just about the the dark side. Like maybe there's a bit, like the thing that you said about. F- feelings because the fear thing never sort of sat right with me it's like what do you mean right. you're not allowed to feel any fear right you you have to like believe so strongly in that you don't fear anything it's almost like a that jedi mantra can almost be like nihilistic like it it doesn't matter because the force will guide me well sometimes like you want to gu- make your own path you know mm-hmm. let the dark side flow through you and feel those emotions and use them to be productive there it is accomplish your goals mm. When did you start playing video games? Oh goodness. I I would have been so young. Super Nintendo was my first console. My dad is huge into video games, still is, and we've just what always is your, All right, we're going to shout out dad. What does he play right now? Right now, he's a master at Borderlands 3. He's a, he's wow. an FPS guy. Whoa, so you should totally tell him to listen to the past episodes because Jackie Cow, he's a developer for Gearbox and he works on the <gasps> Borderlands 3 game. He's come on the show a few times. I 100%. Yeah. I 100% am going to tell him that. He'll be so excited. Yes. Yeah. He and I went to the same college. And what? We met at a Star Wars cantina. Yep. Oh my God. That's so funny. It was very cool. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. They had a, the, Jackie and Nick had a bromance <laughs> at that cantina <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Like all the people were trying to talk about Star Wars World Republic. He worked on with the Bioware team on SOTOR. That's why he was at the cantina and then he moved to Gearbox later. But he, uh, we we're like trying to talk to him about Sotor and we were just talking about Yukon stuff for like 45 minutes, probably. No, like two hours. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> so, so back to uh, you starting to play video games. Yeah. I mean, look, I would have started with Super, Ma- Super Mario, you know, one of the, some of the first Final Fantasies, Yoshi's Island, you know. Yoshi's Island. Yeah. I remember that. Classic. That- it was so good, yeah, when he spits out the thing. Yeah. Blah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I thought the Super Nintendo controller was revolutionary because they gave you those two triggers at the top. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like Nintendo itself has revolutionized gaming a bunch from of the beginning. Yeah. Like they came out with a Nintendo and it was like, whoa, that's like real graphics. But all through the years, look at all that they've done. They are the innovative innovators of video games. Oh, I yeah. Feel. Maybe not like tip top, tip top graphics, but like the innovation and in controllers. Look at the N64 controller. Yeah. yeah what was they, that middle thing, though? That was the joystick. <laughs> no, but like, the, you know, because it has the pro, it's like, I always found the N64 controller so weird. Sorry. What yeah. was the one on the left? You held the middle one and the right one. But then what were you doing with that one on the left, really? That was like oh, the, the, the directional pad, pad right? Yeah, that was the D-pad. Those are like the, the, the extra buttons. Those are, you like, they were extra. Yeah. They gave you the D-pad just so people didn't complain that it didn't have a D-pad. Yeah, there it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because people, that was like one of the first controllers that had an analog stick, right? Yeah. And GoldenEye. It, yes. <sighs> GoldenEye. One of my Wait, didn't favorite didn't GoldenEye. Yeah, games. Oh, so go ahead. No, it's just a great game. A GoldenEye, like, I think I went back and tried to play it. When, didn't you have to like use the analog stick to to aim also? Yeah, like you would move, but then you'd like it. You can move the where you're no, aiming you moved point across with the, the screen. Right? You moved with the um the D pad, the directional pad. I'm pretty sure. And then, but it wasn't like a a normal or I should say a modern FPS where like no. 
wherever your character turned is where you're aiming. Like you could aim on like the corners of the screen and stuff. Mm. That would must have been wicked difficult. Yeah. But it's interesting. So I guess that leads into growing up as a kid, what would you say your favorite um console was? Oof. I mean, like, I'll never forget the magic of booting up the N64 for the first time and being like, okay, this is going to be 3D, but not knowing what that meant. Because I was coming from side scrollers, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and booting up Super Mario 64 and just my mind was blown being out in, in front of that castle and moving forward and being like, oh, this is the future. <laughs> like that blew my mind. And then it led into games like Ocarina of Time, which is I've played so many times. I can't even count. Um, just one of my favorite. Wow. It's, it's the bar. For me, Ocarina of Time is the bar. It's so it's wow. yeah, it's always been my favorite. Did you uh did you play um Breath of the Wild? You know, um after I got an Xbox, I moved from Xbox to Xbox 360 to PS3 to PS4, and I never went back to Nintendo. I you know, I wasn't nuts about the um you know, sort of uh, single player campaign plot rich games that Nintendo was churning out. The only games mm -hmm. that I was sort of interested in on Nintendo were Breath of the Wild, Twilight Princess, but I, I, I just couldn't bring myself to buy a system just for one game. Sure. So, no, I didn't they're play it. <laughs> yeah. They're remaking Skyward Sword. I think, I think they did already. No, it's coming out in July. Oh, okay. It's an HD remix. Whoa. Chicka, chicka. I never played Skyward Sword. I played every other Zelda game but Skyward Sword. Oh, then you'll wow. totally play it on the Switch now. Yeah. You should stream that shit. Oh, well, I just need a capture card, right? Yep. Okay. Easy enough. Boom. Boom, shakalaka. Done deal. Wow. Um, What was your first acting job? My wait, first? I guess my question... Wait, let me rephrase that. <laughs> How does somebody from the land of A get yeah. into acting? Great question. It's a great question, right? Because, you know, the U.S. Is, is kind of the hub over here in North America. But Canada, you'd be shocked how much film's up here. It's been, it's been cheaper. You get tax breaks. There are plenty and plenty, plenty of reasons um, why U.S. networks are coming up to film here, like Suits and all that. Um, yeah, so, I mean, when I, when I first started acting, it was, um, you know... I had just graduated from university and I, you, wait, you at, wait, what did you ask me? <laughs> you asked how did, how did kind I of get like into get it, in, right? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Okay. So I, um, I had to audition for student films. Um, there were some great film schools up here and one of them's called, one of them's named Ryerson and I auditioned for a student film. I went in for this like really badass character. I nailed the read. I was like, this is great. The director was so nice. She's now off doing incredible stuff. Really, she's wonderful. Um, and I got an email later the night being like, hey, you know, we'd love to offer you the role of... Christina. And I was like, this isn't the role I auditioned for. Oh no, she, she messaged the wrong person. So I sent her a message and I was like, hey, I think maybe, you know, you sent this wrong person. She's like, no, I just thought you'd be really good at, at this part. And so I went from auditioning for this like badass rebel and I got cast as this like proper church going, never swears, doesn't do anything. And I was like, okay, so now I'm starting to see what my hit is maybe. And a hit right. is like, um, uh, maybe a ca kind of character that I fall easily into, but I yeah, just like, found like that funny. Your lane, sort of, if that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So but even when I'm cut. trying to put it on, you know, cool factor right. ain't so high. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Like I don't think Marcus could play a character other than Marcus. I I would pay yeah. really good money to see Marcus play. You know. Marcus. A, a dark, yeah, well, first of all, Marcus, for sure, I would pay just to watch you any time of day. But I want to see you do, like, dark. Like, I want to see you, I want to see you tackle Batman. Oh. You want me to play Batman? <laughs> yeah, I want to see some Batman content. I want to see some role-playing Batman content. Maybe for Halloween this year, I'll, I'll dress up as Batman on the stream, and I'll act only as Batman. You have to yeah. say, I'm oh, Batman, a lot. I'm oh, Batman. I'm yeah. Batman. I don't know what I would act what I would be decent at acting at. Probably nothing. I don't think I'm a good actor. Well, that's not true. I have to pretend to that I'm like kind to people when I used to work in direct like patient health care stuff. That's acting big time. Yeah. 
I, I used to, so for reference, I used to, for the past three years, I worked in an emerge, very, very busy emergency department oh, wow. um, as a tech drama and stuff. It was not very fun during COVID. Now Whoa. I work in the research department uh, as of February. I just started there. So I'm in like an office. I get paid more and I do way less. But mm. but anywho, the acting thing, I don't think I'd be a good actor at all. I feel like I would like way overthink stuff and then like uh, my I'd be constantly thinking about like my body positioning, how my face <laughs> looks when I'm saying stuff. Yeah. And just like a lot of things to keep track of. And I know I'm preaching to the choir about all that. It's but, uh, yeah, it's hey, I feel like I'm in the same boat as we're in the same camp. I, you know, thinking too much uh, could drive you nuts. So I'm going to go back to Christina. Mm. How what was it like to play that role for the first time, never doing it before? Wow, it was um, it was nuts. I felt like I was a professional actor and that I'd made it. Um, <laughs> it was like, um, I think, you know, like like all acting. Look, I was really young. I was, you know, it was like I, I was 21. I was like maybe 21 at the time. And I really do believe that your acting is enriched by your life experience. Um, and so I think at the time I did my best, you know, idea of what someone who is, you know, would never swear, would never, cur you know, do anything bad. I did my best impression of that. But I think at the end of the day, if I could go back and redo all of my acting roles, I feel like I'd have such a kick because it's like uh, every role you get, there it's a part it's a part of you like even if you're like the meanest you know puppy herder oh my god i don't even want to bring that up but like <laughs> even if you're a puppy herder it's like no that has to be you have to accept that as a part of yourself there's a world where you would do that and you have to live it and yeah so i think i would approach it a little differently i think i did a lot of faking at the beginning yeah I can I can imagine. Sorry, Marcus is being incredibly distracting. <laughs> puppies. He pulled, He's protecting no, his puppies now. Now that I've no. said puppy herder. And the thing about taking a chance, right? Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going like just going to an mm. audition. That must be so nerve wracking because like I can't even imagine you're up there with like a piece of paper and you're like reading lines and like I'd be so nervous. Yeah. Like I I, I couldn't do that. Like, yeah. I don't think that's me at all. See, right? the, the hard part I would find, like, okay, so in, in the movie or play or a show or something like that, like, the end product, there's there's music and, like, you're on a set, presumably, or, mm -hmm. like, there's the whole setting of this character interaction is all, like, set up for the end product, right? So mm -hmm. in context, when the user, like me, is watching that, that makes sense. Like, it's easy, or I would should say, it seems dramatically easier if you're in this place. Like if you're in Batu, right? And you're sitting in the Millennium Falcon replica, it's easier to like pretend to be Han Solo. But like if you're just in a room in front of two people and now you got to say, hey, you're, you know, Christina and you, you know, you have all this background story, but it's just dead silent in there and there's just people watching you and you're not in that setting. Yeah. I can't imagine having to turn that on and like be that other person so thoroughly. That's that uh, like is what would be it seems like yeah. impossibly difficult to me yeah. to do. You know what I mean? To oh just like God. turn it on out of context. A hundred percent. And then I'll like raise you, you know, you're not always graced with a reader who's going to be looking at you. And I'll also raise you, you know, the writer and the producer and maybe the director all, all eating a sandwich and I'll raise you right. in the scene. You're kissing somebody and, or you're getting punched there. in the face or yeah. yeah. Like the, the audition is, Mastering the audition is totally different. Well, I think it's a different skill than being on set. But just because you mentioned the Millennium Falcon, I just think that's so funny because on the day, it's called on the day, like when you're on set and in the Millennium Falcon, you yeah. just know that you're, you know, there's a boom mic in your face. There's a camera three feet away, like three centimeters away from your nose. There's <laughs> no sound effects anywhere around you. It's totally quiet. You have to pretend that it's moving. So you're just jerking your arms around while someone says, now don't now lean to the left, lean to the right. So it's like, it can be so hard. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Like that's, that's what I'm talking about. I, I, it brings, when we sit down and think about it, like, I'm glad we got to talk. We're getting to talk to you, obviously, because Marcus and I enjoy a lot of media, but it's we don't ever think about 
how much work that goes into it to put on a performance in general, never mind a particularly great one, you know, that we we get blessed with in, in our various Star Wars movies and, and shows and things like that. So kudos to all of you in the acting world. Hey, 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 hey. We, hey, also, it's the most fun job in the world. So thank you for watching it. <laughs> Speaking of which, what has been your favorite job so far? Oh my god, that's such a hard one. Um, okay, well, I did get to go to Romania for four weeks to shoot a movie. To shoot, uh, I was the lead in this movie um, with actually my co-lead <laughs> was a buddy of mine, which made the four weeks in freezing cold Romania in the winter <laughs> way better. Um, but yeah, I was probably being the lead in that movie, and you know being somewhere else. like i've never seen anything like rural romania before it was what's the name of the movie uh it's called the dancing dogs of dombrova yeah it won some awards at the canadian film festival i i took home an award for it and what? it was and it was really fun it was really, well, really, really fun yeah and yeah my character was i think very lovable <laughs> um but if I can also do one more shout out to another thing that I really love. Of course. Um, you could say anything that you love. Yeah. Um, there's, cause this is a tie for sure. I did this short back in 2016. Um, my grandfather had just passed away and my mom and her best friend wrote this essentially love letter to him. And it was, and it was this short film and it was just me and um, Bram Morrison, who is Bram from Sharon Lois and Bram. I don't know if Sharon Lois and Bram is big in the U.S. It was really big in Canada. They were really big in Canada. They're children's entertainers. Anyway, um, and I think bringing that script to life, which meant so much to me and so much to her, was for sure the scariest acting gig I've ever done. I felt so much pressure. I was like, I need to do this justice. This is so meaningful. And I think filming that and then watching it, it's on Amazon Prime Prime now. It's called Russet Season. Um, it was amazing. R- Russet Season? Yeah, so? it's called Russet Season. It's on Amazon Prime in the States right now. Um, but I'm that adding was, it to my list right now. It was very, yeah, it's just really short. Um, but it was re- another, like, for sure, my favorite gig. Of all time. Yeah, I mean, I can't compare. It was so personal. It was so, like, yeah, loved it. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Man, I don't know what my favorite job I'd ever have is, but they are dramatically less emotionally impactful than th- those that you've listed. <laughs> 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 it's, like, com- completely, completely different different world. Mm. Um, what is... Did we already ask your favorite video game? Wait, Did you ask your. F- oh, go I ahead, feel Marcus. like I just threw them at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so I, I, I'm I'm still hooked on this whole like acting thing. Mm-hmm. So going between COVID and being an actor, mm-hmm. and then streaming. Mm-hmm. When did streaming happen? And how did you like? How long did like you're you're so successful? You have such an awesome community because I'm in your Discord and like, Ugh. how awesome is that? And like, <sighs> how do you go from acting to all of a sudden? Hey, I love video games. I'm gonna stream this shit. <laughs> Get out of my way, mofos. Here comes Armanestra. <laughs> yeah, I I actually streaming. I will never. I am so grateful. I, I cannot believe that I found Twitch during this time. I can't believe it. You know, the pandemic happened and so much was taken from us. So suddenly our friends, our work, our communities. I had no idea about Twitch. I had literally no idea about it. Um, When I heard about it, I was doing a photo shoot. I also do photography. Um, And I was shooting this uh, actor. uh, We were, you know, lamenting, obviously, the loss of work and not being able to even do classes to have the fun of entertaining and laughing and all that goodness. And he, you know, I found out he streamed on Twitch and I was like, what's that? <laughs> and he sort of t- began to talk to me about it. And, um, I, I couldn't believe it. I went, I did a huge deep dive. I was playing world of Warcraft at the time and it, within world of Warcraft, I was, you know, trying to go somewhere else other than just being locked in my house, like exploring these worlds. And 
you know, meeting great people, even just within the game and yet always needing to Google everything. Cause I was new to world of Warcraft and I needed help and I'd be <laughs> asking people, but I'd be on wowhead just all the time. And I was like, yeah. what if I stream this on Twitch? And then what if people came to my channel and then what if I could ask them questions <laughs> and they would help me? So literally I made a Twitch channel. I had my first mm -hmm. stream. Um, do you remember the date? June 17th of last year. Whoa. It's coming up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're coming up on <laughs> yeah. what, the big one year. I am. I am. That day, I didn't want to show my face. I was nervous about the internet. I was like, oh, my God, stranger danger, the internet. So I Wait had a like a... You act for a living and you're <laughs> yeah. afraid of the internet? I was like, what if someone sees my face and finds out where I live? Like, it was the most ridiculous. Like, looking, look, looking back... I can see clearly that my choice of profession is people are going to have to see my face. Um, but I had this filter on. It was like a full devil mask filter. Like you couldn't see any of my face. And I didn't know I wasn't streaming my game. I was just streaming my face the whole time. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I, it was ridiculous. And I talked that's... and I talked and talked to myself. I loved it. I thought it was the best thing that's ever happened. That is quite fun. It's really like humbling to have like a, a a random person follow you for the first time it's like whoa <laughs> yeah. you chose me i feel like the pokemon that got picked in the beginning yeah you know? you're squirtle like, i got i got picked <laughs> hell yeah let's go let's go feed up that ratatata yes <laughs> yes and then of course it's like you know who are these people oh i don't know but then they turn like they turn out to be like fantasy people like people I actually couldn't have dreamed up and like right. this scary internet. Like I joke about it in stream sometimes because I'm like, oh, the internet actually is just full of only the most fabulous people. So I just found that out. Um, Yeah. But that's, you know, so June is coming up. So what are you <laughs> going to do for your big one year party? <laughs> yeah. It's, 12, 12 hour stream. It's going to be nuts. Hey, I should do a Marcus. I should do a 12 hour stream, baby. Um, actually, it's funny you should say that I, I have a whole bunch of ideas. And then I went to just a few people in my discord. And I said, Hey, is there anything that you're like, man, I, w I wish I could see you do this just to kind of put a feeler out there just to see if there's anything people are craving. It's kind of funny. They were really mostly just like, let's play games together. Um, which I thought was super cool. I was like, my dream day. Let's go. So I'm going to have some fun surprises and um, for sure, tons and tons of group gaming. I want it to be interactive. That's the name of my game. Speaking of interactive, I did notice. So I just learned what a watch party is. Okay. I just learned about this. And then I saw in your discord, you do watch parties. <laughs> once a month, once a month, we do movie night. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's, what's the movie this night? Um, this what month. got picked? Yeah, this month. Uh, this month, it's up in the air. There are a few options. We watched Star Trip, Starship Troopers last month. And so, you know, some people are like, let's do Starship Troopers too. Other people um, are like, maybe this movie called Fanboys, which I've never seen. For me. Oh, that's, yeah, that's really funny. Is it? That's the Star, yeah, the Star Wars Fanboys. Yes. Yeah, that is. It's, it's so, Nick, I'll give you the context. It's about these dudes who are huge Star Wars fans and they camp out to watch episode one. Oh, and boy. then it films them coming out of the theater after they watched it. And they hate it, obviously. I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. It's yeah. so good. Is um, it like their journey to the to the movie and stuff like I'm that? I'm not saying anymore. You need to watch it's like wow. all right, go get blitzed and just watch it. Okay. Um now how many uh, watch parties have you done? Ooh, maybe uh, five. I, I made that up. I want to say five. Five, six? Which is your favorite movie so far Oof. of those watch parties? Oh, my God. We, one of them, we watched Kung Fury. Yes. Was, I love Kung Fury. I don't know what that so is. Funny. Oh, my God. Oh, oh the squirrel Marcus. Lunch, you need to go watch yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. That's on your list. Top of the Kung list. Fury. It's quick too. I, I usually we look, we sat down for Gladiator a couple months ago, which was like three hours. Kung Fury yes. is, I think, like half an hour. Yes. Yeah. See, this whole like watch party idea, 
it's really cool because with Discord, you just put it on the computer. Yeah. You click share your screen and everybody mutes their mics and you just hang out or you have your mics open and everybody just, you know, laughs and chuckles. And it's a way to be together without being together. Yeah, we do. We have a whole, I have a whole section in Discord for movie night and we do running commentary the whole time. It's super fun. What is one of your goals for your Twitch channel? Wow, that's so funny you should ask that. I was just talking to one of um, my friends, one of my stream friends, Holy Fist. Holy Fist, if you're listening, I'm bringing Holy you up. Holy Fist. Yeah, we love Holy Fist. Shout out to Holy Fist. I could shout out Holy Fist literally all day for everything that he does for me. It's unbelievable. Um, we were talking about goals. I was like, look, I've been pretty cat. Like this year I've been, feels like I've been structured. Like I have my schedule, blah, 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 but very casual. And I was like, this year I'm, I'm making goals. I'm setting goals and I'm going to get them for me. Look, one of my goals is always, which I am full of success in right now is creating a space where people come and they get their laugh on and we talk about literally whatever we talk about and we chill and we have a wonderful time. And to me, that is, look, that's been my, that's been my thing all year. In terms of like more concrete goals, that's literally my next project. I'm going to sit down I'm gonna have a coffee and I'm going to start making little time sensitive plans. All right. But that'll, but a- that'll always be it. That, that's a great way to go about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I yeah. I, I feel I feel like whenever I'm I'm trying to make goals, like I do very poorly with my um with like long sort long term like open ended goals. Like oh, you know what? I need to go. I need to write on the board that I need to clean my closet mm-hmm. generally, mm-hmm. and then just it stays on the board for like six months. Whereas I do way better with a goal that's like I'm gonna clean these two drawers of my dresser by tuesday and then that's i do way better with that and then like on wednesday i'm going to do the next two drawers and then th- thursday of that week i'm going to do you know whatever's left mm-hmm. and then if you itemize it and break it down into smaller ones with actual legit goal like deadlines then it's like if then it, it helps me conquer that like hey i just got home from work or, or whatever i'm tired for whatever reason and it's like eh, i don't feel like in my brain i'm like i definitely can't clean the entire closet right now So I'm not going to do anything Mm -hmm. versus, hey, I need to clean two drawers. Suck it up. You can do two drawers. No problem. Right. You know what I mean? If you break, I mean, that this is like, you know, sort of goal goal creation and and like productivity increases one-on-one. But it it sounds like you need atomic habits. Do you know, I'm so (laughs) glad you said that because I was thinking to myself, today listening to it, it outlines how to actually do the thing, which is exactly what you said. It's being like, I'm going to do this when I close my laptop to go to lunch right specific it's, yeah it's time sensitive what helps me is like granted i haven't read atomic habits this is just the the nick Vern 51 mindset if you will but i i do well with like i have a deadline mm-hmm. and make it a small goal sometimes i even like if i plan out something like that like i literally planned out cleaning my closet like two months ago but um i have sometimes like i force myself to to have smaller like chunks of goal if that makes sense mm-hmm because that holds me more accountable to it because then in a week whenever that deadline's due it's like hey lazy fuck like you it was just this little thing that you were poo-pooing about being a little thing like you can't put it off go do it it doesn't give you me my mental battle an excuse but anywho you mentioned drinking coffee um i gotta ask what do you put in your coffee Ooh, how do you like to drink it look i dabbled in soy for a while but i can't i can't do it it's just milk give me the milk one percent i'm happy I used to do a lot of soy also, and then I developed um, a little bit of an allergy to it. Really? My Yeah, not a lot, but like my mouth started getting itchy after I drank mm. it, which is very annoying. Mm-hmm. But I'm just a little bit of cream. I can't do milk in my coffee. Mm-hmm. I feel like it waters it down. Yeah. Too much. It's not, yeah. I get that. I, I, like, I, get that. I like just a little bit of cream or a little bit of half and half. Oof. But in my cold brew, I'm not going to lie, a little like a splash of vanilla caramel creamer is legit. That sounds good. And the cold, yeah, it's it, yeah, three ice cubes. So it depends for me. Normally, 
I'm pretty grumpy in the morning and I like to feed that dark side <laughs> and I just have like I like only black coffee. Yeah. Just feed the hatred. Yeah. Make it burn. Wait, I yeah, get it. it. Yeah. Yes. Black coffee. Uh hot or cold, depending on the temperature. I usually go with iced coffee all year round, like just black iced coffee, because I want to drink it fast, especially in the morning. Mm-hmm. But like if I'm having a coffee like later like late morning or if it's like afternoon or something, then I want something cool. Like I'll get like a legit latte or mm. something like, like much more frivolous and less business oriented. Can I, can I slide in with a things. coffee recommend or a coffee treat? Absolutely. Have Let's you guys ever tried an affogato? I've had, Oh wait, with the caramel. It's, it's literally just like coffee or espresso or whatever you like with a mm-hmm. scoop of ice cream in it. Oh, yes. I have not tried this. Oh, change your life. Do yourself a treat. Okay. Scoop of vanilla <laughs> ice cream. Will do. And that's I've my good deed off- for the day. <laughs> Teaching you about affogados. So there's a, a popular craft brewing company um, in Massachusetts called Trillium near Boston. Mm-hmm. They ha- One of their very rare stouts that they do, they put lactose in it in coffee and I think some kind of caramel or something. And it, they call it affogato. Whoa. So that's what I thought of it. It is very good. But... um. Have you ever had a Cotaheo? No, what's that? So uh, if if you go to like the liqueur section of your favorite liquor store, mm-hmm. if you drink, um, it's called, it's a Spanish liqueur. It's like basically just 35% like sweetened, like thick liqueur. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's called 43 or 43. It's like orangey colored. Um, long story short, you put two shots of espresso over ice in like a rocks glass and then put a shot of the 43 in there. And it tastes like a coffee milkshake. Oh, it's delicious. Now that's really a good. treat. I had that done in Mexico originally, and then I make them occasionally up yeah. here now. Very good. Um, speaking of ice cream, this is our another staple of ours. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Okay. I like chocolate, chocolate mm-hmm. chips, and chocolate sauce, and chocolate. Uh, double and- <laughs> chocolate brownie. Chocolate brownie in there. <laughs> more chocolate more better yeah and a chocolate and an, and an edible chocolate bowl um no but but if i could be more specific um for sure ferrero rocher anything <laughs> uh, yeah. very nice yeah i marcus what do you think your favorite ice cream flavor is my favorite ice cream is chubby hubby Ooh. who makes that ben and jerry's i oh, knew ben and jerry's, ben and jerry's is my Listen, Chubby Hubby is it. They're they're peanut butter filled pretzels oh, in vanilla God. ice cream with like a like a peanut butter swirl. It's the yeah. greatest. It's the greatest fucking ice cream ever. Yeah. Oh my God. Like you know, you get the pint and you're like, oh, I'm gonna take like ten bites and throw it back in the freezer. Yeah. If it's Chubby Hubby, it's gone. Yeah. And I'm gonna feel like <laughs> shit for the next three hours, but it's gonna be the best twenty five minutes of my life. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Um, so. You're, I don't mean to be negative, Nance, but I'm going to crush your soul for a little bit here. Are you ready for this? Are you sitting down? Oh, God. So I'm allergic to chocolate. Oh, no. <laughs> so my ice cream flavors are a little bit limited, but I, Ben and Jerry's is my favorite too. Um, I think my favorite, favorite, favorite from them is the salted caramel core because it's got like these um, blondie brownie chunks in there. What are, oh, that are yum. really, really, really good. Yeah. And then obviously caramel down the middle. And then a sweet vanilla ice cream with like caramel swirls in it. That is delicious. Yeah. Um, also, shout out to their cinnamon buns flavor. That's probably my second favorite. Yep. And I've decided uh, that when I hit 1,000 followers on Twitch, mm. yep. Nick is going to eat a peanut butter cup live. <gasps> this show. You're such a dick. <laughs> Just punish him. <laughs> so so for reference, it's not an anaphylaxis reaction. It might not literally be an allergy. Right. But all I know is anytime I eat chocolate, I get a very intense migraine for 8 to 12 hours. Ah. And, I vom- and I vomit profusely for the same duration. So what? it is not a fun time no. when I eat chocolate. And Marcus wants me to do that on stream and just suffer. That's some Sith Lord energy right there. Exactly. He's, he's rubbing off on me. He's, a, he's <laughs> the one to uh, be like, he'll get cookies or something. Like when we used to work together, he'd be like, oh, hey, I want this. Hey, you want a cookie? I'm like, sure. Oh, hey, it's oatmeal raisin. And then I would look at it and like, this is very clearly chocolate chip. He just started laughing. <laughs> no. That's <laughs> slick. That's it's very funny. funny. But. Okay. Armanestra. Yes. But tell us, tell everybody where can they find your channel and uh, what is your schedule? Okay. You can find me at 
twitch.tv slash Armanastra. And I stream Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. EST. Easy to the remember. Best time the yeah. first three days of the week when you when you need that hangout. <laughs> 7 you know, p.m. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry. What what's it like to stream three days in a row? Do you find that Thursday you're exhausted? Oh my god. Thursday I go straight into my D D night with my buddies. But um, you know, it's so funny. I um I could have any energy during the day. I could be exhausted during the day, like totally wiped. And then as soon as I am like, sit, I sit down in my chair, I get so amped. I don't, and look, I don't know if that's ever going to fade. So by Wednesday, by my, my third day of the week, no, is my, is my actual honest answer. Like I, like maybe Thursday mornings I'm particularly pooped, but not, not in like a noticeable way. I have like, I don't want to use the, the, I don't want to say the F word, like the F R E A K word. Is that a bad word? Am I allowed to say that word? You can say whatever you want on this show. I don't want to, you know, I have a lot of energy. It's one of the first things, you know, strangers comment on when they come to the channel. They're like, oh, your energy. <laughs> yeah, I hear that a lot. Where? Uh, I was going to say, Marcus uh, gets that a lot. Yeah, well. I could totally, 100%. As soon as I came to your channel, I was like, this guy's energy. <laughs> it's it's a lot but from the second i wake up until the second i go to bed wow really no yeah, it's just like a light it's like a light switch wow like when i hit the bed i'm out i like alarms could be going off and i'm not waking up mm. but until i'm asleep it's go time mm. yeah. well Thanks so much for coming on the show. This was so awesome. Oh, Thank you. Man, it was so great getting to chat with you guys. Thanks so much for having me. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working, Working Class, Class Nerds. Nerds.